Hi friends, so today we're going to talk about material chaining. This is the fastest way to get any kind of planetary materials that you might want. Um, once you get everything set up with this, you'll be netting around three to four hundred materials per hour. Uh, now this is especially nice if you're saving up your Vanguard and Crucible marks for House of Wolves and you want to also get a nice stash of materials on top of that. For now you can actually just ignore the video in the background. Uh, first I just want to go over a couple quick mechanics of how this will work. Uh, so I'm sure you've activated materials and chests before. Um, you know that once you open them other players will have a chance to open those as well and then they'll disappear. Materials actually last for 60 seconds before they disappear and chests will last 20 seconds before they disappear. Now if we're in a patrol by ourselves, we can actually make use of these mechanics. Because if you open a material or a chest, then fly to a different zone, any of the materials and chests that you open will reset to their unopened state, assuming that they haven't already disappeared. So I'm sure you can kind of see how we can take advantage of that by opening chests and materials, flying to a different zone, and then coming back they'll still be there and we can keep doing that over and over again. Uh, however, before we do that, there's two steps we want to take to make sure everything is set up correctly. First, we want to get a patrol by ourselves. Uh, PS4 users will have a really easy time doing this. They can actually just go to their uh, PS4 settings, then date and time, and then set the time manually. You want to change the date back to any previous date and confirm it, go back to destiny, then you can join the patrol and you'll be by yourself. Now you want to do that while you're in orbit. Uh, other players, you'll have to actually go to your router settings and change your NAT type to strict. The best way to do that is once you open your uh, router settings in your web browser, you want to go to your port forwarding settings. Make sure you disable any kind of port forwarding for uh, your PlayStation or Xbox, whatever you're using. Um, also disable port triggering, UPnP, and DMZ. This will make it much more difficult for players to connect to you. So once you've taken care of that, uh, you can load into patrol and you can see we've already been working here on the moon on the second step. And that is simply to push materials from one side of the map to the other. And that is to kind of get them all concentrated as close as possible to a loading point between zones. Um, to do that is a very simple process. You're just going to open materials and chests on one side and eventually they'll start spawning on the other side, uh, kind of close together here so that we can open them all at once. Um, I chose the left side as where I wanted my materials to spawn because the loading point from uh, the archer's line here to the hellmouth is much shorter travel distance than archer's line to the anchor of light. So as you can see, we've actually already started our run here with that first helium filament coil inside of the building and just on the outside uh, there that we just got. We're going to get this one inside and then we're going to get our chest. So this is not really an optimal run, it only has three materials. Um, however, this is a great spot for the chest. So if we wanted to get one more material, it would be pretty much perfect. Remember that we have 60 seconds from the first time we open a material and 20 seconds opening that chest to get to the loading point here. Uh, once we see the title pop up for the Hellmouth, and there it has, everything that we open will be reset. As long as we made it there in time and they didn't disappear, we can go collect them again. So let's go back and check our uh, first helium filament coil inside of the building, and if it's there, everything uh, went correctly. Fly down, and there it is. And you can really do this on any planet, so we'll try it here on Venus next. And yeah, this works out pretty well for us. We actually get a four material and one chest run here, so that's pretty much optimal. Um, something to note when you're pushing the materials to one side is that there are about five materials present on a map at a time and two or three chests, both of those depending on the size of the map. Um, what that means for us is that as we start pushing materials to one side, it's going to get harder and harder to find the stragglers that are left on the side we don't want them. So if you get three materials on one side and a chest, 
that should be fine. You don't want to waste too much time finding that last one um, if you're not going to be farming this for a long time. So three in a chest is fine. Four in a chest is, is great as well. Uh, either way, it'll work. Um, you'll notice that I make a lot of use of my sparrow. Don't be afraid to make gratuitous use of your sparrow throughout this. Um, you are pressed for time, especially if you're doing five different things like we are here. Uh, we want to make sure we get to that loading point before our materials disappear. So don't be afraid to hop on that sparrow. Now, of course, you'll also want to be moving as fast as possible off your sparrow. So uh, that's why I use a hunter. They have the fastest base agility as well as a Mita multi-tool or icebreaker or anything that increases your agility as a weapon is great as well. Um, really any class can do this though. Just make sure you max out your agility before you start on the run. So on this particular run we're in the Divide on the Cosmodrome and we'll be flying over to the Rocket Yard to reset everything. Uh, the distance between these two zones is so short that we'll be able to get two chests in this run. Um, there are a couple benefits to that, one being that chests will drop weapons and armor, can break those down for parts, and then chests also sometimes give you special drops that have a large amount of materials. For example, here I get 10 spin metal and special ammo synthesis and a decent amount of glimmer. So um, farming two chests at a time is uh, definitely beneficial. It's very fast. You can actually just get the two chests and keep flying back and forth getting just the chests as well if you like. And really that covers just about everything. You know, it's very simple, very fast. Don't be afraid to play around with it. See what works best for you. I'll leave you with a little summary of my favorite places to do this. But certainly let me know if you find any areas that you think work well or if you have any questions. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.